My name is Mike Cook, and I'm the manager of security services at Evolve Security. I wanted to take a moment today to discuss an aspect of the hacker spirit, which is evident in the experienced penetration tester. And really, it's something that separates a true penetration tester and advanced threat actors from those that we commonly refer to as script kiddies. Namely, the ability and really the tenacity to be able to figure out and conquer a challenge in spite of the failures that we may experience along the way. To illustrate this, I'd like to share an experience I had from an assessment that I just recently completed. One of the first steps when you're starting an engagement is to enumerate or gather as much information as you can about the target environment. And one of the tools that we use to accomplish that is a vulnerability scanner which is designed to rapidly identify systems that might potentially have vulnerabilities. Uh, we call those low hanging fruits. On this particular assessment, the vulnerability scanner identified some systems that supposedly had a vulnerable version of the HP data protector service installed on them. And a little bit of open source research revealed that there's a Metasploit module designed to take advantage or exploit this particular vulnerability. Now, identifying a potential vulnerability and finding a way to exploit that vulnerability is really only the first step. What I'm more interested in is the ability to be able to answer or provide my customer with the so what factor. Or in other words, is the system actually vulnerable? And for that matter, is it exploitable? And if it is, then so what? Did it lead to other successful exploits and eventually to be able to access sensitive data or valuable intellectual property? So. I loaded up the Metasploit module and went through the process of filling out all the options. Once satisfied that everything was in order, I ran the module and nothing. The module didn't work. I tried several other exploits available on the internet and still nothing. Now I could have just accepted defeat and moved on, but based on the vulnerability scanner results, there was every indication that this exploit should have worked. The vulnerability scanner was able to successfully exploit the vulnerability and get back the results of an IP config command. So I knew it was possible. I was not willing to be defeated. My first step was to pull up the Metasploit module code and try to troubleshoot it, try to figure out if anything was obviously wrong with the code. After reverse engineering what the module was trying to do and fiddling around with the code for a bit, I still was not able to try to get it to work. Again, I would not be defeated. Now, I knew that the vulnerability scanner was able to do it, so I decided to try to figure out how it was doing it. Now, this particular vulnerability scanner has a couple of different plugin types. One is a plain text NASL, N -A -S -L, file that allows a user to view, modify, and even execute code outside of the vulnerability scanner. For this vulnerability, if the plugin was a NASL, I would have been able to easily see what the scanner was doing and be able to reproduce the results. But in this case, the plugin was an nbin file, nbin, which is a pre-compiled plugin designed to protect the source code from people like me. Now, you're still able to run the nbin file outside of the scanner, but this particular one required some options and I wasn't able to figure out what those were. Not very convenient, but again, I would not be defeated. I decided to load up Wireshark so I could monitor the machine's network traffic, and then I ran the vulnerability scanner again. Using the captured network packets in Python, I was able to create a new exploit that could reproduce the vulnerability scanner's results. But getting the output of the IP config command is not very useful for my use case. I went through several more iterations of code and compared every publicly available exploit for this particular vulnerability to each other so I could try to figure out what the secret sauce was. Finally, I was able to figure out the exact bytes in the packet that I was sending to the vulnerable machine that indicated the length of the packet that the service should be expecting. By modifying those bytes dynamically based on my desired command, I was finally able to get code execution that was more useful than a simple IP config command. Now, I should note here that successfully exploiting those systems enabled an attack path that eventually led to being able to compromise every target asset for that particular engagement. I'm sure that others would have been able to figure out this issue a lot faster than me based on their past experience or their expertise. 
That, however, is not the point of the story. What I experienced and what I expect out of the penetration testers on my team is that hacker spirit, the willingness to dig deep, to keep trying, and to refuse to be defeated. If you are looking to enter this field or advance your career, then you should foster this spirit. Seek out challenges and experiences to help you grow. Be willing to research and understand a technology well enough that you can manipulate it for your own objectives. Thank you for joining me for this moment. I hope it inspires future success in your own endeavors.